My name is Nikhil Kushalani. I'm a medical oncologist at the Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, New York. I am uh, the section chief for soft tissue and melanoma and primarily specialize in the treatment of patients with uh, these two types of cancers. I also run the high dose interleukin 2 program and serve as the director for this biological therapy that we offer for patients with uh, advanced melanoma and advanced kidney cancer. Today I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about some of the recent developments in soft tissue sarcoma, specifically um, a new drug that was recently approved and where this current field is headed. Soft tissue sarcomas uh, are a very diverse group of disorders uh, where the cancer can arise essentially from the muscle, from the fatty tissue, from blood vessels, from nerves, and of course from bone. And uh, there are more than 50 different subtypes of soft tissue sarcoma, making it a very, very diverse group. We are recognizing now very quickly that one size no longer fits all in advanced sarcoma. For advanced sarcoma, that cannot be removed via surgery. That means um, we cannot go and cut out the metastases in the lungs or wherever else there, uh, there uh, may be. We typically will consider systemic therapy with chemotherapy traditionally. And there are several drugs that are active in this disease. Uh, the most common ones that we have used over the last 30 to 40 years have been adromycin and iphosphamide and more recently gemcitabine and docetaxel, usually a combination of the latter two. Other drugs that are active are temozolomide, which is often used in brain cancers as well, um, and the intravenous version called decarbazine that we also use in melanoma. But regardless of what um, agent you choose, the response rates are clearly suboptimal and we have a lot of work to do. The average uh, probability of things shrinking down or the cancer responding and shrinking down to any one of these given as a single agent is about 10 to 20 percent, which means only one in five will improve, the vast majority will not. We have used a combination of these drugs for some patients, for example, adromycin and ifosfamide is a commonly used combination, which clearly has an improved response rate of almost 30 percent, but comes at a greater price in terms of more side effects. So we tend to reserve that for patients who um, are exceedingly fit, who don't have any other major medical problems, or in those patients whom we need to get a good response quickly because the odds are that they will respond better to a combination regimen. Um, but eventually most of these drugs uh, will work only for a short period of time and the cancer will start progressing. So we are clearly in need of newer drugs and this is a very active area of investigation. Recently um, a targeted drug called pazopinib uh, also called Votriant, was approved for the treatment of advanced soft tissue sarcoma in all subtypes with the exception of the liposarcoma variant, which is the type that arises from the fatty tissue. Um, this was approved by the FDA in the United States in April, and uh, this was based on a large clinical trial that was performed at 72 institutions in 13 countries um, internationally. So it was really a culmination of a truly collaborative effort which is very, very important in a rare disease such as sarcoma. Pazopinib is an oral agent, so taken by mouth. It is what we refer to as a small molecule inhibitor, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, that specifically targets uh, the vascular endothelial growth factor. These are tiny proteins on the cancer cell surface that promote the uh, formation of new blood vessels as one of their functions. So they are important for the uh, growth as well as the spread and metastatic potential of cancer cells. Pazopinib specifically tries to shut down that pathway. In this large international study, patients uh, were randomized, which means by the toss of a coin, they were randomized to receive either pazopinib or no treatment um, after failure of prior standard chemotherapy in patients with advanced disease. Um, this trial enrolled over 360 patients uh, with about 250 of them uh, getting pazopinib. Overall, this drug was well tolerated and the striking finding was that pazopinib delayed um, the onset of progression of their disease by almost threefold when it compared to no treatment at all. Um, that in itself is um, quite a landmark because it certainly um, helps keep the disease under control for a longer period of time. 
if you were to look specifically at the probability of pazopinib causing a shrinkage of the cancer, that occurred only in a small 6% of patients compared to no patients on the placebo arm. However, almost 60%, so two-thirds of patients who received pazopinib had some form of disease control, which I think becomes important um, in advanced soft tissue sarcoma because it tells us that we can at least control the progression or spread of this disease for a longer period of time. Overall, this drug was quite well tolerated. The main side effects tend to be fatigue, an increase in blood pressure, an altered taste in the mouth, sometimes a distaste for food, which in turn can lead to weight loss. Um, it can also cause some rarer complications like affecting the thyroid function and causing uh, the thyroid gland to uh, slow down in some ways. So this is something that uh, practitioners should be aware of so that they can periodically check thyroid functions in these patients who are now receiving pazopinib. There are also rarer serious complications uh, such as development of blood clots. Um, it can also cause an elevated blood pressure related complications sometimes that can be severe and in extremely rare cases can even um, predispose patients to developing perf perforations or holes within the gastrointestinal tract. And these are something, some things that uh, patients as well as their providers should be aware of. Um, we have several patients on uh, pazopinib right now uh, since its FDA approval and uh, most of them seem to be tolerating the drug very well. Um, one patient has actually experienced an improvement uh, in their disease and uh, the others are still too early to tell. So at least from our standpoint, we have an additional option um, to offer these patients.